China has become the first country to appoint an ambassador to Afghanistan since the Taliban came to power two years ago. Ambassador Zhao Sheng was welcomed in a lavish ceremony as he presented his credentials to de facto Prime Minister Mohammad Akund in Kabul. The appointment is a major boost in the Taliban's quest for international recognition, which has evaded it so far over its restrictive policies against women and girls. And joining me now for more is DW reporter Pinish Javed. Pinish, China doesn't recognize the Afghan Taliban, yet it has appointed an ambassador. Is this official recognition? Bhiresh, it is certainly not an official recognition, but very close to recognizing the Taliban government. Appointing a new ambassador who has presented his credentials to the Afghan Taliban prime minister definitely shows that China is endorsing uh, the government of Afghan Taliban. And, and what? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. And if we look at it from Afghan Taliban's point of view, I think it's a big diplomatic victory for them. And what interest does China have in Afghanistan? There are two main interests that China has uh, when dealing with Afghanistan. Number one, security, and number two, economy. Since Afghan Taliban have taken control of Afghanistan, the country has become a breeding ground of terrorist groups. According to UN, at least 20 different terrorist groups are operating in Afghanistan, and some of them pose threat to China. For example, Turkestan Islamic Party, uh, which has members of uh, weaker separatist groups, from China's Xinjiang province. Then Tehrike Taliban, Pakistan, Balochistan Liberation Army, Islamic State Khorasan. And many of these terrorist groups have attacked Chinese nationals in the region, mm -hmm. have attacked uh, developmental projects of China. So it's essential for China to have a safe, secure, and friendly government in Afghanistan. And there have been some reports that Afghan Taliban have been able to contain threat, for example, of Turkestan Islamic Party in Badakhshan province that borders China's Xinjiang province. So security is one important concern of China. Secondly, uh, economy. Chinese firms and China, China's government, um, they want to benefit from the resources that Afghanistan has. Mm -hmm. British China already maintains um, a hold of world's market um, of processing and refining of rare uh, minerals such as cobalt, lithium, and other critical important minerals that are essential for many industries, but most importantly um, for as the industri uh, world um, industrial countries or the rich countries are moving right. towards green economies, they need these kind of minerals. And there are some estimates that suggest that Afghanistan might have um, the highest reserves of lithium and the total worth of different um, uh, minerals in Afghanistan could be one to three trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. And China wants to access that. And how have other countries uh, responded to the interest that China is showing in Afghanistan? If I talk of Western countries, it's a difficult situation for them. Um, if Afghanistan, um, um, if, if China continues to invest in Afghanistan or if China controls the resources of Afghanistan, then ultimately it increases um, uh, a supply chain uh, or uh, strain for EU or supply chain dependency of, for EU and other Western allies. But on the other hand, if China stops investing um, in Afghanistan or um, if its projects fail in Afghanistan, then the human humanitarian crisis worsens, which means that there will be more migration of people to neighboring countries and some of these people will come to EU. EU doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. And if the country crumbles, it means there is more, more space for terrorist groups to rearm and regroup. And history tells us that then the threat of terrorism doesn't remain in Afghanistan or the region, it can spread. But traditionally, it was always Pakistan that was the Afghan Taliban's biggest ally. So what explains the reason that the Taliban appear to prefer to deal with China instead of Pakistan? 
I think Afghan Taliban want to assert, uh, assert their independence from uh, Pakistan. They don't want to be seen as somebody who is dependent on Pakistan, but <clears throat> most importantly, money. Um, all these reserves that I've talked about, it's useless for Afghan Taliban because they do not have the money nor the capacity to extract these important minerals China has that capacity. And Viresh, we are talking of a very poor country. Mm -hmm. So almost 34 million Afghans, that's almost the size of the entire population of Poland, they are living in poverty. Afghanistan doesn't have, Afghan Taliban, they do not have the capacity to help their people. And China is making big promises, there, such as constructing a railway line um, across Afghanistan, right. uh, a, a line that would connect Uzbekistan to Pakistan. So these kind of pledges Pakistan cannot make. Right. Can you stay with us? Because we need to talk in depth about this relationship between uh, Pakistan and the Afghan Taliban. And it essentially isn't going well, to put it mildly. And tensions are most visible at the disputed border. Now, both sides exchanged fire recently at the Torkham border, the main frontier crossing between both nations. It was then closed, opening only after a week. And as the following report shows, each time the border is closed, it's people who suffer. This is what closure of the Pakistan-Afghanistan border does. Thousands of colorfully painted trucks get stuck, sometimes for days on both sides of the frontier. Business between the two countries, worth millions of dollars, is at risk of loss. Last Friday, after about one week of closure, the Pakistani authorities opened the Turkham border. We had been stopped here for several days. Now the gate has opened. May God keep it open. Our grapes, tomatoes and cucumbers, among other things, were rotting. Finally, sick Afghan patients, desperate to get treatment in Pakistani hospitals, are allowed to cross the border. I am sick and one of my family members is in Pakistan. I have a respiratory disease. Last year I took medicine and they asked me to come back and visit the doctor again. The weather has changed. I'm going there for treatment. My family is there and my son is living there. The movement of people from Afghanistan to Pakistan happens under tight security, highlighting the immense lack of trust between the two. The latest diplomatic deadlock started with the cross-border firing incident between the border guards earlier this month. Pakistan blamed the Afghan Taliban of building a post unlawfully on its territory, and each accused the other of firing first. Relations between the Taliban and Pakistan have been testy since the group took control of Kabul in August 2021. Islamabad say militants launch attacks on its territory from bases in Afghanistan, charges that Afghan authorities deny. But an escalation in differences mean the people suffer. When this route is closed, not only Afghanistan, but for both Islamic countries, it creates a very big problem. From both this side and the other side, political matters between them must not be turned into this, as people will face problems. Just imagine how many people get affected. Pakistan and Afghanistan share a 2,600-kilometer-long porous border that cuts through rock mountains and valleys. But the major movement happens through the border openings. And closing the borders means disrupting millions of lives. PW reporter Binish Javed is with us in the studio. Binish, what is this uh, border dispute between Pakistan and Afghanistan? So, Biresh, since Pakistan was created in 1947, no Afghan government has recognized uh, Durand Line, which is an internationally recognized border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. So it has always been a source of conflict between the two countries. Now, even though Pakistan has for years covertly and overtly supported Afghan Taliban, when Afghan Taliban uh, took control of Afghanistan or came into power, they also have the same views as of the previous governments mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. Um, and they also 
uh, reject the demarcation that Pakistan has made. So Pakistan has fenced almost uh, nine, more than 90% of the 2600 kilometer border with uh, Afghanistan for security reasons. So pa Afghanistan blames Pakistan that some of the areas that Pakistan claims are in its territory mm -hmm. are actually Afghan are, are part of the Afghan territory. So this is a continuous dispute uh, between the two countries. But if this has been a continuous dispute for so many years with the previous Afghan government mm -hmm. as well. Why is it flaring up under the Taliban? So th I think the Taliban want to gain the public support. They want to drum up public support. And it's a very sensitive issue domestically in Afghanistan. I have been to Afghanistan, I've met many Afghans, and they have told me that some of the cities in Pashtun belt of Pakistan, they say that they, they believe that uh, that all of that is Afghanistan's territory. So uh, gen uh, naturally, Afghan Taliban doesn't want to go against the wishes of their own people. Mm -hmm. And small incidents keep happening. For example, you would see Afghan Taliban soldiers damaging the fence um, or um, uh, constructing or building a check post, mm -hmm. uh, which Pakistan would say that it's happening in its in the, in its in Pakistan's territory, and that could lead to clashes between border guards. And sometimes these clashes become deadly, and we see that even civilians get killed. As we saw in the Torkham uh, border and other points as well. But disagreement over the border isn't the only point of discord, is it, between Pakistan and the Afghan Taliban currently? So Pakistan says that since Afghan Taliban have taken control of Kabul. Um, suicide attacks and terrorist attacks in Pakistan have significantly increased. Pakistan blames Afghan Taliban of harboring and also giving safe haven to Pakistani homegrown Tehreek Taliban Pakistan or TTP. Um, and Afghan Taliban deny these allegations. Pakistan says through different channels it has communicated to Afghan Taliban that it must control the movement uh, of uh, or, or must contain the threat of TTP. But um, Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan enjoys support in the rank and file of Afghan Taliban, and so far we have seen that they have um, not. Uh, Pakistan says that Afghan right. Taliban are not able to control um, these attacks that Pakistan blames are emanating from Afghanistan. Pini Sharve, thanks very much for breaking that down for us.